In this video, we'll show you how to raise and lower the ceilings and floors in individual rooms. As you can see here, I have created a building with a living room, kitchen, and other rooms. I have defined the living room as a separate room from the kitchen by using the Room Divider tool here under the Wall Tools Parent tool. A room divider is simply a zero inch width wall. You can define separate room areas by using any of the wall type tools, including the room divider, invisible walls, and railings. I will select the living room that I have defined here and use my Open Object tool here in my Edit Toolbar at the bottom of the left side of the screen to open the Room Specification dialog. Here under the Structure panel, you can see the floor and the ceiling heights are following the default heights as indicated by the red check mark on each of the little white wrenches. That is the symbol for default. In each individual room, you can customize it by changing these numbers. But remember that now when I go into my default settings and change heights here, the customized room settings will not change automatically. You can always change them back to follow the defaults by clicking on the white wrench icon in the room specification dialog. Before we change the floor heights, let's open the cross section that I have created through these rooms so that we can see in real time how our changes affect each area. I'll tile these two views so that we can see both the floor plan and the cross section. Notice here that the first floor level subfloor is what is designated as absolute zero. What that means is that in the room dialog where you see absolute elevations, all of these numbers are relative to that number. The floor below is a negative 120 and 5 8 inches. The floor above is a positive 120 and 5 8 inches. Now let's change the floor level in this living room to a negative 6. Note that when I change that number, the relative height numbers also change. Relative heights mean that the numbers are in relation to the specific room heights. So the rough ceiling now changes from 108 to 114. Now watch what happens to the ceiling height in the basement here in my section when I click OK on the dialog. Only in the area that we changed, the ceiling has been pushed down into the basement level, not here in the kitchen area. And notice that the basement floor did not move. Now let's take a camera view here in the living room so we can see the effect of the change. You can see that the living room floor has dropped down. And back here in the floor plan, notice the change in the room divider walls. They have changed automatically to full width walls. If I change this wall to be solid instead of invisible, you can see that it is using a standard interior wall type, but it's leaving it as invisible. This allows for the framing of the face of the drop in the floor. You will also notice that the baseboard has been automatically added to the face of these walls. You can remove molding from an individual wall by selecting the face of each wall and opening the specification dialog. Then here in the general tab, put check marks in the no room molding interior and no room molding exterior boxes. Now let's raise the ceiling heights in the living room. Again, double click on the room to open the room specification dialog. Go to the structure tab and here under Absolute Elevations or under Relative Heights, it doesn't matter which you use because either one will change the other. Let's add 12 inches. You can do this by doing the math yourself. Or, cool trick, you can have Chief do the math for you by typing in plus 12. Then hit your Tab key. Notice what happens to the Absolute Elevation ceiling number as well as the floor below when I hit my tab key. They have both changed. When I click OK, you can see in the cross section why. The floor on the second level pushed up into the second level, but the second level ceiling did not move. 
It was at 9 feet, but now it's at 8 feet. And notice the entire second floor moved, not just the area above the living room. Now the kitchen ceiling is higher as well. It was 9 feet, and now it's 10 feet. So what if I don't want the ceiling over the entire level to raise? To do that, you will need to define an area on the second floor level that aligns with the raised area on the first floor level. First, I'll click Undo to put the ceiling back where it was. Then, we'll define a room area on the second floor that matches the first floor. One easy way to do this is to copy the room defining walls from the first floor to the second floor. I'll select the three walls that define the living room area. Click on the Copy Paste tool in the Edit toolbar at the bottom, then go up to the second floor level. I can go to the Edit Tools drop down menu, click on Paste Hold Position. That will copy the walls in the exact same position as they are on the first floor. Now go back to the first floor level and double click in the living room to open the specification dialog. Add 12 inches to the rough ceiling height. Hit the Tab key to check the results, then click OK. Now you can see that the spaces over the kitchen and below the kitchen are still following the 9-foot default heights, but the spaces above the living room and below the living room have changed relative to the custom heights. Remember that you can make this change with any wall type. I'll go back to the second floor and change the invisible walls to solid walls. You can see that the second floor walls are still defining the space above. There is so much you can do with the structure of your building using floor and ceiling heights. Just be aware of what effects it will have on the spaces above and below the rooms you are changing.